Quilting for non-quilters, that's what this Sewing with Nancy program is all about. If you have a computerized embroidery machine, my guest and I will show you how to turn it into a quilting machine. Please welcome Denise Abel, who's on the Sewing with Nancy staff, an expert embroiderer, now a quilter. You know, Denise, when we think of machine embroidery, we think of thread embellishment, but not in this episode. And that's right, Nancy. Today, we'll be showing how to piece quilt blocks on your embroidery machine. The piecing of the simple shadow block was stitched on a stabilizer, assuring precise piecing without precise cutting of fabric strips. You can quilt without being a quilter. Stress requilting with machine embroidery, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. If you're accustomed to machine embroidering, you'll realize that usually you have the decorative stitches. But this, the decorative stitches are gone for straight stitches, but for preciseness. Denise has designed three different sizes of blocks, five inches, six and eight inches that are like a template. The template that you normally, if you're an embroiderer, know that you print out to see the pretty design. But this time, let me put it right side up, there you go. You can see that there are different quadrants and they're marked with one, two, three. And that will actually stitch on your fabric or your base fabric, which is a stabilizer. Embroiderers use stabilizers. It's heavier than an interfacing. It's placed in a hoop. This is a mesh stabilizer and it has a fusible side to it. You can see the shininess of the fusible. Here's the flip side, which goes to the underneath of the hoop. And Denise, you taught me a great tip, and that is with a hoop, you like to put a little extra grip on it. Absolutely, we're working with one layer here. So a tape, that is sticky backed and then it's grippy on this side is placed on the outside of the inner hoop. You peel away the yellow section and then that backing is placed next to the hoop. This is the sticky part and then the grippy part is on the outer side. And the reason for doing this is that we're only going to hoop this very thin stabilizer. So on my, on my table I have the stabilizer with the fusible side up. And notice I haven't cut the stabilizer at all. I'm not trimming it, I'm leaving the roll attached and then using the palm of your hand, sink it down. And when you do so, and after tightening the screw, you get a very tight drum-like hold of the fabric and that's really what's needed. The fabric that you're gonna use for this particular shadow design is a, you cut six and a half inch squares and then cut them in half diagonally. So we have white on white, but they're cut in half diagonally into a half square triangle. So we started off with a six and a half inch square and then of various colors of fabric, several blues, several greens, two and a half inch strips. And in the book that accompanies today's program, if you're wondering exactly how to measure these, we tell you that and also you just make it a little bit larger than the template, about an inch of each section. Use an embroidery needle and an all-purpose thread. Not embroidery thread, not rayon thread, but this is all-purpose cotton thread or poly cotton or 100% cotton, is it, excuse me, 100% polyester is our thread of choice in both the needle and the bobbin. So I've done the simple part, giving the setup, and Denise is going to show you how to do the piecing in the hoop. Absolutely. So we are embroidering here, so we need to select our design for the block. And so this is our simple shadow block. We'll select that on our machine. We'll bring it to sewing. And then we'll be able to start embroidering. So that design that I had in the template is just what you have on your screen. Exactly. And as you noted, the design has numbers in, within the design and those actually stitch right onto the stabilizer. But don't worry, they'll be hidden within the seams. 
We're embroidering with black thread today for the contrast. Normally you would select a color that is going to coordinate or blend in with your fabrics. And this is going to give us a guideline of where to take our fabrics and position them. Remember, we're piecing our quilt block right in the hoop. And these are perfectly digitized <laughs> designs for precise details. So the little numbers of one, two, and three have stitched right on the stabilizer. Exactly. And that tells us which areas to place our fabric first mm -hmm. and then so on. So we take our fabric for the number one area that Nancy has already cut to fit that size. We're going to position the fabric over top of the stitched outlines and we want it to be over top of the outlines and past it mm -hmm. for a little bit of a seam allowance. Uh, what we need to do next is then take our fusible and actually iron the fabric right to our fusible stabilizer. So we're going to take, of course, a quilted Teflon and place it right underneath the hoop. Now this is a fabric like you would use um, for making an insulated kestrel carrier or some uh, pout holders. And you make sure it's long. And there's a reason why this is a bigger piece of fabric, Denise, because uh, we both have done, made a mistake. And that is, we've cut it small and then stitched it down to the stabilizer. So it's so large that you know you have to pull it out. Absolutely, that's a, definitely something that can happen very easily. Mm -hmm. So you want a visual reminder to take it out when yeah. you're done ironing. Right. So now that the fabric is fused in place, we can then start our machine again for sure. the second color. Now normally with decorative embroidery, you would change the color of the thread. Mm -hmm. The machine is always stopping to tell you something with this process, but not to change the thread color. We're now piecing our first fabric to the stabilizer. It's fun just to watch it stitch. And Precise it'll be details every time. Yeah, yes. Now we're gonna see some color being added. Absolutely. Now since we predetermined our fabric size according to the template, mm -hmm. we really don't need to trim any excess fabric off of sure. our pieces here. So we'll take our next color of fabric and we'll be positioning it to next to our next area of stitching to fill in. And you just take the edge of the fabric, mm -hmm. lay it right next to the edge of the stitching line that is separating the areas. You wanna be about a half an inch past our area here. Position that down and then we can start the machine again. And that's going to piece it right in place. It's going to give us our seam allowance that a traditional quilter would manually stitch. Gingerly hold the fabric, but always make sure to take your fingers out of the way. <laughs> That's an accurate fourth of an inch seam allowance if I ever saw one. <laughs> Better than I can do manually. Uh -huh. So then the next is to take this fabric, since we've placed it right sides together, we now need to flip this fabric over so that it's right side up. Mm -hmm. And before we do that, we place, of course, our ironing surface right underneath the hoop. And since it's a small layer, it fits right under there. I'm going to then take our mini iron, which fits right inside of this hoop very nicely. I like to press the stitching right as it stitches mm -hmm. to set the press or to set the stitching and then flip it over. And you'll notice that I start right where that seam is and push away with the iron to make the fabric lay flat. And we're activating all of those little fusible dots on that stabilizer to grip and hold onto the fabric. Again, we take our ironing surface out and we start the machine once again. And this is gonna tack it down. Absolutely, right in place. Any excess threads can be trimmed away later. And you could either trim this fabric now or wait until the next piece has been 
stitch. So I think we'll add the next piece of fabric. Absolutely. We take our next strip, right sides together, position it half an inch past. And you'll notice we're keeping the strips nice and long. Mm -hmm. We want to sew again, holding our fabric gingerly in place and stitching it down. And by keeping the fabric nice and long in a strip, we'll economize on fabric use. As Denise presses up that last piece, she would have one more tacking strip, one more tacking stitch, I should say, to hold that last blue piece into place. And then the machine would just stitch around the very edges. And then it's time to add the next block. And we'll show you how that's done at the table. Denise finished stitching the final thread collar on the machine and now you're ready to do some trimming. Absolutely. We have our completed block in the hoop. We're going to take our scissors and we're going to trim away our fabric strips and that way the fabric strips will be ready for next time. We want to take a cut about a half an inch away mm -hmm. for our seam allowance. And you pop it out of the hoop and then you re-hoop it. We want to conserve on stabilizer so mm -hmm. we're going to hoop right tight next to our finished block. So usually you cut the stabilizer, you cut another section, this saves a lot. And then you can do some trimming after you've stitched all of your blocks, which could be quite a few. And because of the preciseness of the stitching line, you can use those as guidelines with your ruler. And Denise recommends just to trim an eighth of an inch, which isn't very much, right from the last stitching. And my goodness, all of your blocks are perfectly sized. You would have that black thread, but you'd have perfectly square blocks. Then you can determine the layout. Here comes the fun part. Yeah. With this simple Amish shadow, you have options. The, we have the Amish shadow traditional layout is just having the triangles all in one direction. That's a lovely layout. And then for the fields and furrows, you do some rotating. We'll give you all these guidelines but it's kind of magical. I always like this part of quilting to see what options you have. You can see the fields and the furrows. And then the block that we're going to be working with is a point on point. Putting four blocks together, a little slate of hand here, and maybe you move these around and determine how you'd like the look to be. So once you have that determined, you take your finished blocks, you put them right sides together, Aligning your areas, you stitch with a quarter inch seam, mm -hmm. giving you your two blocks together. Now, we like to press these seam allowances open and give plenty of steam to the seam. Steam to the seam. And then block out the moisture, have the moisture wick up through a wooden block. This is a tailor clapper. You don't pound it, you just press hard. And the neat thing that happens to this is that the seams get so crisp. Nice and flat, precise seams every time. And notice how these points align. Even if you're a non-quilter, you can't go wrong because the machine does all the stitching and gives you the accurate stitching as well as the cutting line. So that's how you make this basic block to become a non-quilter to turn into a quilter. Combine piece in the hoop techniques along with traditional embroidery when sewing a charm block. Pre-cut fabrics are used which make this quilt block even faster to create. Well, we named this the charm block because we're using a charm pack of fabric. Usually there are 32 pieces of fabric. They're five inch square that come in a package of coordinated fabrics. And for many of them, we're going to cut them in half down the middle, creating two half square triangles. The blocks that these fit are the charm block. We have an eight inch, six inch, and five inch. For the six and eight inch, we're just going to use these charms that are cut on the diagonal. The template is much like that basic shadow block, the simple shadow block. It's not the pretty embroidery, but it has number systems around the edge so you know exactly which sequence to add the fabric. When Denise created the sample for today, she merged the 
piecing block technique along with pretty embroidery. So Denise, why don't you show us how that's done? Absolutely, it's very easy, easy to merge in decorative designs mm -hmm. into this block. Great place to showcase designs. So we have our block up on our screen. We always merge that in first. We're then going to add our decorative element and today we're adding in lettering. So we'll select our font from the built-in instant gratification fonts <laughs> here. Then we're going to add our lettering. Adjust the size as needed to fit inside of your block mm -hmm. area. Continue your little message here. And we have our three lettering letters and then we are ready to sew. And what Denise has already done on her stabilizer, hooped the same type of stabilizer, she did the first thread color, which is the outline stitch, and it gives all the numbering systems. And Denise, you've also added the center block. Absolutely. So we have that started, our stitching, our first fabric, and our second stitching. So I advanced the machine to be to the next piecing selection. So then we're going to take our half charm, we're going to position it, right sides together, right up to that stitching line where we left off. So you're lining it right up so there's no guesswork. Then we put our foot down and we start sewing. And again, just gingerly hold on to that fabric. It's going to put a lock stitch so your fabric is nice and secure forever. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> stitches right along. And you'll notice that we cut the fabrics always just with a little extra lined up so that if you get it a little collywampus, it's not going to matter at all. That's right. We have a little bit of extra fabric around. We then put our pressing surface under. We take our mini iron that fits right in the hoop, right under that machine, and we press from the steam seamed edge and press it right in place, right on that fusible stabilizer. Gives us a nice crisp edge. We then take that right out and continue the stitching process. So there's, the first thing you do is align the fabric, you stitch it, press it, and now it tacks. And all eight of the charm half square triangles are going to be added in the same way. And Denise, why don't you show them the sample that has all the eight, eight charm squares stitched because now the pretty part's going to be added. Absolutely, so we'll take our Pro in process hoop here, take that out, and because the you can take the hoops out of the machine, um, there's no fear of mm -hmm. unalignment here, so you can always take your hoops out to um, trim your fabrics if needed, but today we're going to advance right along to the embroidery selection. So as we were doing construction, we had our construction thread in, we now want to put in our decorative thread. So we're putting in a nice decorative rayon thread for a bit of sheen. And there are a lot of piecing selections here. So, so we'll you're advancing. Advance them. right along past that. It's kind of like the cooking show. They always have a souffle in the oven after they've made one. So we had the embroidery already done and just going to add the finishing touch. Let's pop that right in. So we're right next to our lettering here, and then we'll go ahead and stitch that right in place. So function and embroidery all in one. So it, it lines it right up in that center block. Absolutely. No fear of taking your hoop out of the machine. Just don't unhoop the stabilizer. Yes, right. And as you did before, Denise, you have the stabilizer as a continuous roll. Absolutely. So it's con you on our first sample, we definitely had a continuous roll. For this sample here, we just cut it sure. to make it easier to take in and out, but always we recommend keeping it right on the, the roll. So with about, oh, I'd say eight minutes of sewing with the piecing of the eight pieces and adding the decorative stitch, you can create a block that is so accurate at every point because not because of my scale or Denise's scale, just because it's computerized. And it's a great way to become a quilter if you've never thought of quilting before.
During the past four years, we've followed the progress of an amazing nonprofit organization whose byline is to mend communities one sewing machine at a time. From donating machines to now teaching and paying it forward, it continues to expand. Please welcome Margaret Jankowski, the founder of the Sewing Machine Project. Margaret, it's great to have you back. And when I heard about your new initiative of incorporating sewing classes and paying it forward, I knew we had to tell our viewers about this. Oh, well, thank you for having me back, Nancy. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, we're really, really excited about this new program. Um, it began here in Madison, Wisconsin, um, where we teach local classes, and we teach people to sew, and then incorporated in, that, in those lessons is a pay-it-forward element, where they make something for their own community. And after their lessons are complete, then they keep the machine that they learned on. And we've been working with many different populations here in Madison. And it's been so successful that we decided to offer it nationally. And now you've expanded to many different states. We have. We have. We have classes going in Mississippi and Alabama, Louisiana, and more applications are rolling in all the time. You were telling me that you work with a community center. And in the community center, you've had, you've, as you said, many different populations. But then mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. It's a six class, six classes for mm -hmm. this session but then they pay it forward by making something that is needed in the community. Absolutely, yeah, we have them, we actually ask as a class, we mm -hmm. ask the community center what their needs are. So for instance, one of the centers where we work has a really active food pantry program and in the winter time, um, there are many homeless clients coming in. So mm -hmm. the class made fleece hats for those clients to keep them warm in the winter. And you've also made baby blankets mm -hmm. and tote bags. Absolutely. So, so they get to keep, they work on this machine, they get to know it, mm -hmm. and then they use it. Absolutely. You know, one of the other interesting ways that we've asked people to pay it forward, um, we worked with Bhutanese immigrants here in Madison, mm -hmm. and we didn't know the language. We needed an interpreter. Sure. So we had them pay it forward by coming back and acting as mentors in, in other classes. So that was, that, that was their way of helping out um, and helping us with the translation. The sewing machine project obviously started by having many sewing machines donated and you have them repaired, but you said right now you're machine rich. <laughs> we, we are pretty machine rich. Yeah, we have a lot of machines, um, although as we s are sending them out to these different groups around the country, that's, that's helping us you know, keep the flow of machines going. Um, but there are a lot of other things that we need, too. And, and they are? Well, um, I mean, one of the top things would be, you know, we need resources, funding resources sure. coming in, of course, as many nonprofits yes, do. Yes, of course. Um, we also need notions, um, things that people would use in sewing kits, pins and scissors and rulers and that sort of thing um, for Just the a basic, basic to get, sewing needs. Just to get them going. Mm -hmm. I think one of the statements that you said to me when we had a little pre-interview is that you stated everyone has the power and the responsibility to mend their community. I mean, I think that's it's very poignant. Well, thank you. You, I mean, no matter of your economic status, you can pay it forward. You can help mend the community by sewing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've certainly done that with your communities and teaching them. What is the most gratifying part about this for you? Because you volunteer. Um, I do. I, um, the, oh, there are so many levels of gratification. Mm -hmm. but, but one of the things that really has struck me is when I began this, I thought it was really just about us giving sewing machines to someone else. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned is that it really serves everyone who touches this project, whether it's yes. volunteers or donors. Everybody feels the power of this project. So a used sewing machine that's been up, given a tune-up mm -hmm. has so much life to it. Absolutely, and it, it gives people a tool and the means to not only uh, you know, save money and help their family, but also to, to potentially make some money you know, to mm -hmm. support their family. And a lot of self-worth comes from mm -hmm. the ability to sew and quilt and use your hands and create something. Mm -hmm. So good job, Margaret. From donating machines at hurricane areas of, in uh, Katrina and also Kosovo now to paying it forward, teaching. I congratulate you and your co-workers. Thank you so much. Thank You're you welcome. for inviting me back. You're welcome. <laughs>
And if you'd like to have more information about the sewing machine project, you can go to All Things Sewing with Nancy at nancyzeman.com, where you can watch 52 of the most recent shows, rewatch my interview with Margaret or the program I just did with Denise. And most of all, click on Nancy's Corner, and then you can get a link to Mark the Sewing Machine Project website and find out more information. So do go there, watch the show, rewatch it, and also contribute and be part of the Nancy's Corner organizations. Thanks for joining us today. Bye for now. Nancy and Denise Abel have written a fully illustrated book entitled Stress-Free Quilting with Machine Embroidery that includes all the instructions from this two-part series plus free embroidery designs. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2718. Order item number BK2718, Stress-Free Quilting with Machine Embroidery. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.